I am Nero. Good afternoon. There is a gentleman, distinguished colleagues, recognize the presence of the President Pro Temporary of the Senate, Senator Lawrence. We want to welcome all of you to this confirmation hearing of the Liberia Broadcasting System uh, Director General Designate. Eugene L. Fagon. Today being Monday, March 11, 2024, and at about this time in the Senate Chamber. We will have opening prayer, a minister of the court by the side and arms. Welcome remark will be done by the designee of the committee. Self-introduction will be done by members of the committee and other distinguished senators. The nominee will present a statement, a vision statement. Thereafter, we have interaction. The senators will ask the nominee, and the nominee will answer. Thereafter, there will be closing statement by designee of the committee. The nominee will then be discharged from one of us, and there will be a benediction to close the day. So once again, welcome, Mr. Nominee. Welcome. And we begin this hearing. Opening prayer. With sharp, sweet. We want to be grateful to God this afternoon. Today is a, is a, is a tough day for me because I think I have preached more than four different times, four, four different hearings today. So we just use one of the same scripture to just uh, conclude today with this uh, devotion. I will let you read John chapter 21, verse 16. Again, Jesus said, Samuel, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. Mr. Darada Destiny, do you truly love Liberia? Do you truly love Liberia? If you truly love Liberia, then we pray and hope that you will take care of that national radio station the best way. With great integrity, with great honest, honesty, so that the Liberian people will receive from that station that which they will have yearned for for more than six, seven years. I hope that your leadership will be a different one to bring a great change. Take care of that radio station the best way. And that can be done when you think Liberia, when you love Liberia, then you will build that station. So capacity that people will ever remember your legacy if you are designated. We God bless you to do so. We God help you to do so. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the great men of our time, our head at the gate. Though I know today is a heavy day for them because they have been carrying all around to just lead the motion. So help them in such a time, oh God, that your grace will sustain them to do so with great honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. We will now have welcome remark by Senator Jerome Borchester Board of Rosie County, the co-chair of the vice chair of the 
this company. Mr. So, Nomini, they call my name, but they don't do it. No, sir. So, you don't hear me? Yes, so, let me say a very big welcome to you and your family of supporters, friends in the back. You are all welcome to our chambers. This hearing is about understanding, getting to understand the suitability of the nominee to this position. And so we'll all do it together while you are here and we'll make that decision as the committee moving forward. You're welcome, Mr. Nominee. Thank you, Mr. Master, distinguished colleagues. We have a prior rule here. To those in the gallery, no clapping, no booing. We know some people came to support, some people came to witness the process. Selling us will ask questions. Some will seem annoying. Some will seem hard question. But to you the supporters, no cheering, no booing. If the senators come to the white, we confront these nominees when they are not performing. You can say that the senator they confront them. The police say we are working to cheer and have the senators to support. Senators will engage with the nominee after the service or present this statement. The senator will have 10 minutes. The chair will determine additional time as the near arises. At this point, we will do self-introduction of committee members and other distinguished senators. The pro temporary is here. The president pro temporary is here, but she won't introduce herself. She did not of the Senate, and as the official of all committees in the Senate. You feel no observe. So we'll begin with our own on the bottom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Mo Tani Kori Saros, um, as representative for local county in this Senate. Thank you. My name is Wellington Timon Smith, um, Senator from the Rosses County. <clears throat> Edward Snow, uh, member of this community. My name is Jonathan Gorsha Sobe, I represent the people of the energy. Yeah. No. <laughs> and Senator Sobe is the co the vice of the community. On the far right there is Mr. Kwame Ross, the chief of staff in our office, and by protocol, he's the secretary of the committee, taking the for our report. I'm Abraham Darius Dillon. I represent most of our companies, and I'm privileged to chair this committee. And so if that you don't get confused, I'm serving the chairman before the third committee of the Senate. There's a nominee. You will now have the time to present your statement, your visual statement, uh, should you be confirmed what you expect all of you are out with us. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable <coughs> members of the Library Senate, Honorable Chairperson of the Committee, officials of government, the addressing members of the fourth estate, fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you today as a nominee for the position of Director General of the Library Broadcasting System. About six years ago, I had an opportunity to stand before this body for the position of Deputy Minister for the Press. Is that a, yes, a huge oversight. So you will please pause, you will go, you will start over, but you will have to be placed on a court. Yeah. You sat me at half you and then you were running the wheel now, so you get the other order. Then you sat me at half, you will place you appropriately on a court, 
The testimony I am about to give is the truth. Is the truth. Nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Spoon with dirt to me. Mr. Chairman, no matter for me your information, for me this is quite perfect. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you can please sit down and you can proceed down to the hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable members of the Library Senate, again, Honorable Chairman, officials of government here present, members of the Fourth Estate, fellow citizens, ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today as a nominee for the position of Director General of the Librarian Broadcasting System. About six years ago, I had the opportunity to stand before this body for the position of Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs, Ministry of Information, Culture Affairs, and Tourism. Let me seize this opportunity to thank President Joseph Newman Borkai for this historic nomination and assure him that if confirmed, his reign of having the LBS return to the number one spot as a public broadcasting system for all Liberians to come to reality and be realized. Let me thank all family, friends, relatives, and especially my mother, Ms. Maya Baola Wright, my siblings, etc., who stood by me all these years, especially Ms. Della E. Smith, my kids, B. Sierra, Zena, Joy, Eugene, Eudoria, Fangon. I will be ungrateful. If I forget to say thank you to the many supporters, fans, well wishers, citizens, especially the friends of Van Gogh, a big thank you to all of you. Honorable members of the Library Senate, I am no stranger to broadcasting, be it television or radio. I am no stranger to the media, be it in the mainstream media, the print media, the electronic media, or social media. I do not wish to remind myself of my days with King FM, King's FM, sorry, LIB 24, etc. in 2017. I do not wish to tell my story working as Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs, managing government media relations and information for almost four years. I can only try to remember my role on the now famous Spoon TV and the famous evening program Spoon Talk. However, this hearing presents an opportunity for me to be able to rescue the state-run broadcasting system if confirmed by this honorable body. The challenges at LBS requires immediate attention with expedited urgency. Not to take up much of your time, let me bring you up to speed with just a few of the challenges and that together, if confirmed, and with, and with us, understaffing. The once vibrant 260 staff LBS is now staffed at 146 personnel. In 2021, I'm told that government pension 37 individuals with the six appointed individuals that we all know after the transition gone, three persons seriously ill, two are persons now listed for pension, the question then becomes a matter of how we effectively and efficiently <coughs> run a system that is understaffed. With 24 contractors, many of whom with contracts that have ended last year, the system is faced with the, with the threat of functionality. 
seven outstations, most of whom were out until last week and told they were, they were all put back on. The one in Bong, Lofa, Bomi, Basso, Sino, Grand Jida, Maryland County. The Chinese technical group were helping with six substations, excluding Sino, which is an LBS owned project. We have technical problems, I'm told. A 10 kilowatt transmitter delivered by the Chinese cannot be used due to numerous problems ranging from 250 kVA transformer that should at least be 500 kVA transformer. Currently, the LBS is using a 3 kilowatt transmitter for 89.9, 97.7, and 99.9 .9 FM stations. Fuel consumption or generators. 186,000 used annually, example of which will be $15,000 used per month on the main station to retain 3,000 gallons of fuel for the month. The seizure and encroachment on the properties, and in particular the land of the LBS, remains a serious threat to the existence of the institution. We are informed that the Liberian Rural Communications Network in Banga, Bong County, was taken over by Representative Marvin Cole, where he renovated the studio building and has a private radio FM station fully operational now. The old transmitter site is now referred to as Gobachok Market. The system lacks logistics. They lack insurance. They lack equipment, they lack training opportunities, and they have underpaid staffings. They lack the human resource capacity, we are informed. Honorable Chairman, members of the Library Senate, these challenges require expedited, solution-driven attention. To achieve this, we must employ a team-driven approach to ensuring that these challenges are confronted head on. If confirmed, I pledge to lead this effort, making sure that the urgency with which I am presenting these challenges will be the same urgency and energy I will bring to bear in finding lasting solutions, working with the team in collaboration with the members of the legislature, our partners, our customers, our donors, etc. Where there is a way, there must be a will. I believe, with your help, oversight, the following challenges requiring immediate attention can be addressed. Effective and efficient staffing for LBS. A fully functional and operationalized LBS. A, techni a technical support, sorry, second to none, to include maintenance and training of our technicians to confront current realities in the broadcast industry. Reclaiming LBS properties for the proper and purposeful use intended. That is, to benefit all Liberians. Logistics, insurance, whether health, health or risk insurance, equipment, training, etc. Consideration for solar power energy to cut costs and promote efficiency at all of our stations across the country is confirmed. Members of the committee, members of the Library Senate, if confirmed, LBS will live up to the true meaning of its existence, taking into consideration Article 15A to E. Especially C, the right to be informed, and D, having access to state-owned media by all. The LBS will become a public broadcasting system for all Liberians, regardless of political affiliation, religious preferences, social status, etc. If confirmed, LBS will entertain, educate, promote cultural and traditional values, growth and development,
etc. LDS will innovate and motivate, enlighten our citizens as well. If confirmed, LDS will pay, will play, sorry, a pivotal role in the socio-economic and political advancement of our beloved country, Liberia. With the necessary support and an increase in budgetary appropriations, the LBS can once again become the beacon of hope where our citizens can once again enjoy the benefit of media <coughs> in all its present day availability. That is print, electronic, social media, and now artificial intelligence. Honorable Chairman, members of the Library Senate, I want to thank you for your service to country and assure you that if confirmed, I will try my best to ensure that LBS is second to none in the area of broadcasting, both television and radio. May God continue to bless the works of our hands and help us to advance LBS beyond the expectation of our people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lavinia. The seven gentlemen scripted, right? Yes, sir. We need to have a committee for So we are going to have a seven gentlemen. Yes, sir. We are going to have a seven for the committee. Thank you. How many carpets? Uh, I think this should be about nine or eight. Nine. Uh, so we'll make additional carpets. Uh, when you yeah, we'll get all the enough funds, that's only thing we can do with the carpets and things that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So we we'll now go to um, question and answer, interaction. Each senator will engage you. 10 minutes, ask you your answer. If you don't feel comfortable answering the question, feel free to say you are not comfortable to answer. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll begin with Senator Nathan McGill from McKinney County. What I bet for them, we start with Senator Sarah. Yeah, so he did, yeah. Yeah, but I can't add it. Senator Momoa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Good afternoon, Mr. Nomini. For me, I would appreciate the government to President Bartha for nominating you to this position. I, I know you are being broadcast even for quite a long time, you have a vast experience. So I wish you well in the endeavors and make the LPS good for us. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Momo. I'm not going to come to you. No. You're the only president. Senator Jim Osmith of the Rosa County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are no stranger, as I said, when we're talking about government or the religion. But this one is somehow a mixture. You are not quote unquote in government public religion. You are coming to manage the state broadcaster. And from your presentation, you have showed the people of Liberia that you will go slightly outside of the established norms in Liberia that when you are managing your PC or the Minister of Information, you should only be pretty single of the government. And your presentation said that 
EWC will be for all Liberians. This particular assurance was a conversation you have with President Joseph Walker as a policy statement of this government. Let me interact. Thank you, thank you. Uh, not only was it a conversation I had with him, uh, Honorable Senator, that's the way it should be. And the President shared his vision with me, and I concur with his vision. And I think um, LBS is a state-owned media entity, and the Constitution is very specific as to Liberians having full access to the state-run media entity. And I think that's the way it should be. It's just, it should be. The show is different from the reality. Yes, sir, I acknowledge that. That was what it has presented itself to be in the past, not even the last six years, but over the years before. But as a nation, as we grow stronger, you get to understand our rights and get to appreciate, uh, appreciate the Constitution. <coughs> it's only fair that we live by the law. It's a state-run media institution. Therefore, it belongs to all Liberians regardless of party, religion, status, gender, etc. The how it should be is a good way. Over 10 years from the administration of President Saleh to the administration of President Weir, there has been a draft law then gathering dust on the shelves to transform the EWC legislative not Google to transform it to a state broadcaster. Where do you stand on the issue? Will you, will you resurrect that particular draft bill and bring it to the legislature? Honorable Senator, I believe that is the right thing to do. I will work in collaboration with all the others to make it happen. But the truth of the matter is, the law says in Article 15, that no Liberian citizen should be denied access to the state-run media. So the law will only strengthen what the Constitution has already provided. And so LBS, a state-run media entity, will be for all Liberians. And the law that is crafted and the bill that is about to be submitted, I'm told, will be fully su supported by me, simply because it will only go a long way to strengthen the already existing law uh, uh, constitutionally. Eugene Lamin Fagan. Yes, sir. That is well known. Yes, sir. You will be caught up between the rack and the hard place. Managing the state broadcasters, dealing with independent journalism, and being an advocate or activist. Please explain your role in the three areas as you intend to sell the Waters Administration Information Act. Thank you very much. Well, Honorable Senator, I cannot explain my role or the role assigned to me by the act that created the LBS. And that role is to formulate and implement policies of the Liberian Broadcasting System in collaboration with my deputies. That is the role assigned to me by the act that created the Liberian Broadcasting System. And I will not perform outside of that role other than the role assigned to me as a term of reference by the act that created the system. Thank you, God. Distinguished colleague from the Rosas County, who will have a uh, move over to Senator Edwin Navisio of Bowling County, followed by Senator Tatan McGill of McGill. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Zulini, how are you? How are you, are you on drugs? No, sir. Have you taken a drugs test? No, sir, but I'm prepared to take one. It. I'm prepared you to take it now? Right now, I'll take one. Are you sure you're not on drugs? Right now, I'll take a drug test. I'm not on drugs, sir. Have you, have, have you taken drugs before? No. The president said drugs will be public element number one. The president who has nominated you has taken his drug test with the vice president. Why have you deliberately refused to take your drug test? Honorable Senator, I've not refused to take my drug test. As I said, and I say again, even right now, 
It is available and ready to take. Why now? Why are you disrespecting the president? Uh, I'm only a, a nominee. Have you done your asset declaration? I'm only a nominee. Uh, I've not done that, sir. So the president declared his asset. You refuse to do yours. Our president took drug tests. You refuse to take drug tests. I haven't refused to take drugs, drug tests. I haven't refused to declare my asset. The law requires, as an official of government, for me to declare my asset. And when I become an official of government, if confirmed by you, sir, I will declare my asset. Do you deserve my vote? Yes, sir. Give me two reasons why I should vote for you. The first reason is I'm qualified. The second reason I'm the son of Bobby, and you are my representative. I'm senator. So, OK. I'm looking at your educational qualification. I see you have an academic qualification. I see you have two A degree. Then I see University of Liberia off, on, off. What do you mean of on, off? Honorable Senator, I don't only have two A degree. It should have been four, actually, but I have three. No, I'm not reading. I brought them with me. It's uh, on my. Credentials there you see three. One is in general education, one is in social work, one is in political science. I also brought my bachelor's degree, my own society certificate, and those documents are accompanied by transcript sealed by the various institutions. So if you, if you request them, sir, I'll present them. You want to show me where they have political sign on your the government gave us? Uh, yeah. The bachelor's is right here. No, 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 no. What you give us, I see general education, I see social work. Okay, you know, brother that bring up on off. I know what I mean, on off. No. When I attended the university, it came up to during the war. You and I went to school together, honorable senator. So when we were at the university, the war struck us. So on and off, and then we fled. No, I didn't bring that brother. No, I am saying when, when I went to see Dominic together, we know you better. Yeah, so. Are you confused? No, definitely not. Do you have any regrets why you were dismissed by President Weir? Uh, partially, I'll say yes, because I thought I was serving my people and I was doing the right thing <coughs> and I told the truth. So he fired me. Yes, I do have regrets that I did not have the opportunity to serve the library people to the full potential that I have. And so I regret that part. But having been dismissed, I move on. What will you do differently in this new post? In this new post, what I think I will do differently is I will not be defending the government, but as such as my time of reference entails, I will be formulating and implementing policies and programs for the library broadcasting system. So the role will be different, and I'll do it differently. Do you believe in your previous post you blindly defended the government? And sometimes you overdid it, or put blindly you overdid it? Honorable Senator, uh, the opinions expressed more often by librarians are opinions, and they are entitled to it. And sometimes they will say I blindly, sometimes they will say I overdid it. But then what do you say to the people who support me? Or what do you say to seditions that are also librarians? What would you say to independents? They will say, you did us a heck of a job. So again, it's, it's the kind of thing that you're between the rock and the hard place. You can't please everyone. You do the best, and you do it to the best of your ability. Are you a better Eugene Pagon or the same Eugene Pagon? <laughs> well, my name says I'm Eugene Pagon. And I've always stood for the truth. I don't think I'm a better Eugene Pagon I just think that as you know, you get older, you get mature, you grow, you move from. But if otherwise, you're more mature. Uh, everything for me is is given growth. <laughs> no problem. Yes, sir. Congratulations, you have my vote. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. What did you do to Thank you, sir. That's no. Better set up a public party. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gigi. Yes, sir. No, I know I know you. Better I know you. You know, the very well preaching. And it's very active to you, Lord, my dear. Maybe that was a rhetorical question. 
but in actuality, it's a very serious question. And and uh, he wants me to also raise the issue. You are propagandist. And by your own presentation, EFB should be neutral. EFB should belong to all Nigeria. The issue of EFB has always been that those who control EFB will always take a bargaining position. To the extent that people from other political institutions of political belief will be denied their right to view their opinion on EFPC. I want to ask you, are you very well committed to these principles as you are ascribed in your presentation that EFPC will belong to all Nigeria? And you will not be in a propaganda war to say, no, <coughs> why don't promote the government? I want to make sure the government is around. I saw somebody speak to you after the next day, I would deal with you. Do your fight and treasure. Thank you, Honorable Senator. Um, like I said, I start the game of football. When you are a defender, you play number five. When, when you are a striker, you must score. And I'm sure the Honorable Senator Jonathan Bocha is so, so well aware. When I worked in the government, yes, I was, I was a head <laughs> And uh, as Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs, I played a role. In this new field, I have a role to play, and that is to formulate programs and policies for the system to work in the interest of the people. I am fully backed by Article 15. So, yes. LBS will be for all Nigerians, and if anybody knows anything about being victimized, in 2017 when you served as chairman, we went to the state-run broadcasting system to have our program aired, and we were denied. Under my leadership, it confirmed that will not happen. Article 15 will be my reliance, and the instruction given to me by His Excellency President Joseph Numa Bokai to make LBS a public-run radio and television broadcast system that reality will be fully felt by the people of this country. Thank you for the chair. Uh, I don't want to wish you all the best. I know you do it, but I know you're fighting for this country. You work with me day and night. I'm trying to make sure that I'm very good. Everybody, everybody ain't going to be voting in this state. So I don't want to wish you all the best. Go ahead and do what you like. Be watching you. I know you love propaganda, but who actually you? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Maria. The Vice Chair of the Committee, Senator, Senator Silver of the Working Committee, is also the Chairman of the Senate Committee of Maria. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Nomini, uh, let me congratulate you for your preferment. Um, we know of you and we speak about you in different forms and my love of God, no one will say you don't know this job. So let's say it that way. So I have a few concerns. What is your thoughts around broadcasting on your national television in sign language for the deaf. Thank you, Honorable Senator. I've always had a passion for Nigerians with disabilities. Uh, and I've always felt that they've been treated unfairly. As I walk in here today, uh, some people were privileged to watch that. I saw a visually impaired woman trying to climb the stairs with a king that had no reflectors only, no color coding, it was old. And I knew I had five kings for the blind brought in from the States. I immediately sent my driver back to the car and he brought the king and I shared the king with her. She was very excited. And she told me a story that she was broadcasting hmm. on voice and as well as OKFM, teaching people 
to understand the blind, especially in terms of crossing the road, being able to assist them, recognizing the king and what have you. But her inability to access funds denied her and the program was just recently taken off the air. Honorable Senator, if confirmed, the blind, uh, the visually impaired, sorry, are Liberians. People with disability are Liberians. And the law says no citizen. If confirmed, we will do our best to return her to the airways so that she can educate Liberians on how to care for visually impaired people and how to recognize the king so they're not run over. Uh, sound language. Normally people will say that people are dumb, they're deaf. Those words have been uh, taken back now. All Liberians with disability will be accommodated if I prefer, especially educating the general public on how to handle them. Thank you. That was moving. <clears throat> Quite recently, I had a conversation with the Director General, the last one, Madam Billete, regarding the presence of ELBC in our chambers during our plenary deliberations. What's your take on that? Well, again, Article 15 is very clear. The right of the people to be informed. It is not a privilege. It is a right. And the legislature seems to have the responsibility to make laws, provide oversight, and represent the people of this country. And if there are major issues, except otherwise, it should be covered to the benefit of the Liberian people. Just because a person lives in Swerju, or a person is in Lofa, or somehow woke up Jimmy, does not mean that they shouldn't know or hear what's being discussed here because of the distance. If confirmed, we will ensure that their rights to have information as citizens will be respected. Thank you, Chief. Um, <clears throat> So their rights will be respected based on the dissemination of information. I'd like to add that we try to do it in the language they understand. Let's bring ELBC news in Grebo in River G, not series. Let our people hear and understand what we are talking about. So if there's any confusion, they will hear it from us here at this plenary and you will have the, the, the right information to act on. So that said, I will yield, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Distinguished Vice Chair. Mr. Dominic Blackburn. Mr. Dominic Blackburn. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Upon which law alternative is the Liberia Broadcasting System of well, it's uh, a PRC degree, and again, uh, that is why when I heard that laws were being crafted, the bill was in the making, I said I would support it to the best of my ability, simply because all along this institution that we're talking about has been operating on a PRC degree. So that was step by step. It is on the strength of that degree that you are nominated. Yes, Honorable Chairman. What's a functional, functional role of the, the, the broadcasting system, the global broadcasting system, as contained in that decree? The functional role. The functional role, uh, according to my understanding, a copy of which I have here, yeah, is to promote growth and development, promote integration, promote rural communication, allow for our people to interact village to village, and what have you. It's a long list of things, but chiefly amongst them is what I have just cut it off to you. To promote reconciliation, integration? Yeah. Did it say to be divisive? No, sir. Did it say to deny one set of the problems? No, sir. Will you allow critical opposition view at the station? Yes, sir. You are honorable? Yes, sir. It's being recorded. Yes, sir. I will allow 
critical opposition views because those people are Iberian citizens. How has the state of the, the system, LBS, funded in keeping with that decree? Question. 60% comes from the government, 40% is revenue generated, and because of that, I, in my statement, I ask for you to give us budgetary support because uh, the LBS, according to my understanding, was hard hit, and that's why they ran from 216 employees to 146 being on the staff. So if we are to get back, I'm appealing that the legislature look at the corporations because 60 percent and having 40 percent come from revenue generation is not going to cut it, sir. Do you uh, have an appreciation of the wisdom behind why the system was required by that equity law to fund itself 60 percent and the national budget does the balance 40 percent? Do you? have an appreciation of the wisdom behind that question. Yes, sir, the, the government is providing the 60% and then the 40%. Yeah, is right, a, right. But the wisdom behind it at the time saw that institution as the one I made in the land of the blind. And that was in the 80s. Uh, they did not have serious competition. And there was market for uh, advertisement. There was market for campaigning. There was market for products, whatever. It's not like that today. There's a proliferation of radio and television stations, cables, and everything, and that has changed. So the wisdom behind that cannot suffice any longer. So I don't want uh, a situation where we will be debated. But Mr. Nomini, I will disagree with you. I will disagree with you because radio is content. The content when you have listeners. And the more listeners, the audience you have, you will have a balance man, you will do business. So if people are not doing business with ERBC, it is because of what ERBC has made itself into. Correct? Absolutely. So that's, that also should suggest to me that if you can restore the content, of ERBC, the quality of the news. At a certain point in time, the headline of ERBC news was about the president, the middle part of it was about the president, and even as they ended the news, something about the president, they were putting on it. So the content and the, the programs were all hijacked by partisan programs. So the content. Sorry, plastic bag. Yeah, the content became poor, and it became distasteful to the listening audience. So everybody left the audience. Do you have any intentions to restore your business to what it actually was intended to be? Thank you, Honorable Senator. I'm going to share your wisdom, and uh, we'll definitely work in that direction. Yes, it's not only my intention, I have the passion for it. Uh, during the years growing up, we only used to wait for that voice to say, Split, Baboos, Ali, Barakar, or Ali. And don't forget to say goodbye before you leave. <laughs> goodbye. People just wanted to hear it. When television came on, there was Marawala Balawala, and people were running to be seated because there was probably no space in the living room. Yes, you are right. It had to do with content. When Victoria Ruffo or Wilma Bashini or others came on, there were people running. Today, it's not like that. If confirmed, we will bring the programs, we will formulate the programs, and, and, and make sure that the contents we provide to our people will encourage them to run to television or radio. You said the station, the entity is on staff. Yes, sir. So for a vibrant 260 staff, we are the entity is now at one for the service. Yes, sir. Even with the one for the service, there are people to be pension, 
Sir, do you intend to take the passenger number back to the vibrant tool system? Sir, it will be, yes, I intend to make sure that the station, uh, the system is properly staffed. I've been assured by His Excellency uh, President Joseph Numabuaka of his inflation commitment to making sure that happened. I know I have far sighted and visionary leaders like you in the Senate who value your people very well. I believe that if confirmed, working with you, especially you, uh, in this committee, that that system will be brought up to power. How long is it going to take for you to start praising the president and thank the opposition? Question. I'm not sure I'll be in that position, sir. My job is clearly defined. My job is to formulate programs and policies to make the system work. My job would not be to praise the president, but to make sure there's growth and development. What's the difference between your current role, should you be confirmed, and the role you occupied at the Ministry of Information, where you were being fought for the station in favor of government, was in opposition? Question. Well, the difference there is clearly uh, defined. I have a role at LDS, and like I said repeatedly, is to formulate programs and policies. At the Ministry of Information, I was Deputy Minister for Press and Public Affairs. I was responding to uh, allegations. I was responding to uh, press. I was responding to uh, people that saw the government in a certain way. And that is not, that, that will not be my role. Mr. Lomini, you are not here as a nominee of the Ministry of Information. Yes, sir. But you serve in our role before. Mm -hmm. You are performing sir. in our role. Your conduct in our role yes, sir. is also being questioned here. Yes, sir. What is the functional, key functional uh, wisdom behind the formation of the Ministry of Information vis a vis? That would be a question. Well, to be honest with you, Honorable Senator, up to today, I still ask myself the, the roles played by the state run broadcasting system, the office of the press secretary, the deputy minister for public affairs and the ministry of state, the minister of information, and his four deputies to include the deputy minister for press and public affairs. However, Sir, it's government. It's not me. You have been also. You. The, 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 the wisdom behind the formation of LPS in keeping with that decrease. And the wisdom behind the formation of, and the purpose for the formation or establishment of the Ministry of Information. Yes, sir, that's what my, that, that exactly was my response to you. That indeed, when you asked me the wisdom, I think that ministry was probably established before probably I was born in the 60s. I wouldn't know what they were thinking at the time. They, but yeah, when it comes to. The purpose as contained in the act. To propagate government's programs and policies. Hold it right there. What's the purpose contained in the decree establishing its LDS? Similarly. And that is to promote. So the others had to propagate. Did you, did you promote government policy and, and government reconciliation integration at the Ministry of Information? No, at the Ministry of Information, I was to propagate. Propagate what? Government programs and policies. Attack opposition? No, sir. <laughs> Respond to opposition. Respond to opposition. Yes, sir. So even if the opposition is a member of the government, as in the legislature, and you choose to support the members of the legislature that are part of the ruling party. I do not recall going after members of the legislature no, no, no. in that. I do not recall no, no, no. going. Okay. So this so zone was here, similarly on a court, and denied that he did a video. He deleted the video from his page, and he came and challenged they said it. Yes, sir. What he did not know is that we have downloaded the video. Yes, sir. It was based upon which we denied him. They said it, denied him. Not because 
he issued the strongest statements in the video when he came here and denied making the statements all of deception because he had deleted the video without knowing that we had downloaded the video. Yes, sir. I'm asking you again the honor of. Yes, sir. Is there no video of you attacking government officials in the opposition? Question. Again, uh, Honorable Senator, like I said, the role I played in the government was the role I was assigned to play. So, uh, the, the, the purpose of the formation, establishment of the Ministry of Information was to promote integration of government policies, government programs, and to inform the Liberian people about what government was doing. Yes, sir. You chose to, to, to attack government officials who disagree constructively with the very government program because of the way it was being done, vis-a-vis -vis protecting and promoting government officials from the ruling party. Correct? Again, honorable senator. So let me tell you. I'm not, yeah. Let me tell you. So I'm going to give you a microphone. Right. We're going to have the microphone. Right. After your BS. Will you do the same? No, sir. My terms of reference are clear, and I've repeated that over and over. No, you can't read back to it. The terms of reference are not much different. Integration or, or reconciliation, promulgation of government policy. And government policy can be promulgated by diversion of views, diversity of views. For instance, we stay in this chamber, we debate issues pro and con, and then we derive a vote. But the Ministry of Information, including ELBC, will take opposition position for attack against the government, disrespectful, divisive, and, 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 and all of that stuff. And you are the Ministry of Information, you saw that as your role. By the time they said this senator disagreed with the president budget, fast presentation. This other lawmaker here disagreed with the president flying private jet, fast presentation. Well, now I won. <laughs> <laughs> now we should say to your business to do the same question. No, sir, if confirmed, I told you that I will be within the confines of the terms ascribed or subscribed to me, and that is to formulate the programs and policies that will enable to run the institution or the system. Thank you. Uh, ERBC is supposed to be across the country. You have giving us a gloomy picture or situation or state of your business, as you know it. I'm sure you have some consultation. You know everything that is wrong at your business. What will be your anticipated monthly income? Question. Well, I've never worked at LBS before. But I am told that the Director General of LBS makes anywhere between 3000 to 4000 That's what I was made to understand by people who've been there before, but I've never been there before, but that's what I was told. So the people told you that 200, 260, but the 260 employees were in place and one for the same deadline. Yes. The people told you 37, supposed to be pension. Yes. The people told you 24, Contractors uh, uh, stay around. Yeah. But they tell you exactly how much the monthly salary is going to be. They were not exact, honorable senator. They said uh, they were around and close to it. Yes. They were not, they don't want to say nothing there. They won't know our salary, right? Well, that was what I was told, sir. Mr. Lomini? Yes, sir. My father? Oh, sir. ERBC, like my colleagues have said, and our concerns, is supposed to disseminate government programs and information to our people. I think ERBC 
cause the conflict. And you need to engage with community radio station. Since you've done a, an assessment of the situation of your business, to know how many gallon of fuel you will need the hour, the cost of a generator, all that stuff. Have you done a budget program here at the now budget with the cost of what you, what you need to get money? Well, based on what I know so far and the uh, conversations I've held so far, uh, LBS stands at about one million eighty-six thousand. By eighty-eight five percent of that is for salaries. To run an effective system, again, uh, will require a team sitting down and putting together a real budget. But in estimation, you will need around two billion dollars to at least be able to put together what we are asking for. We also uh, have said to some individuals that if confirmed, we will look at alternative energies, especially for our substations in the various counties, to at least cut back on the huge budget uh, allotment for fuel. The vice chairman of this committee asked a question, and I want to give you back on it as you wind up. When the budget of the country is submitted to the legislature, it's about five to seven hundred page document. The media, most times, and select people, take the budget, five to six hundred page document, and open it to the portion that has the legislature. And if it is a seven hundred million budget, the legislature has 65 million. That 65 million is the discussion for the whole year. Nobody talks about 65 taking away from the balance that is left of 700 million. And the reason most of the people think the legislature does, should not give me assist is because the, the private media, and right for the two, will take excerpt, excerpts of who said what during session, during committee hearings, especially it depends on the editorial policy of that media institution. So media institution, editorial policy, and nothing positive will be on our station about the other politician or the other government. Some media editorial policy. If we can't find anything negative about this government official or the government entity, we will not promote it even if they're doing something positive. Only ELBC can do that generally for the people. Do you, will you consider, or will you make it a business to have your BC when you live the Senate deliver region Tuesday and Thursday? Do you commit to do that? <coughs> now, this is not a compulsion. This is not something that you must say because you want to be confirmed. There's not something that you must compare yourself to say they are true or not both. But you want to look into that so that the people of this country, the only people who know what's happening here are the people, especially on social media, who have data to work, to listen to what's happening here. But there are very few, no matter what. Will you bring the Senate deliver vision on your vision? Thank you once again. Honorable Chairman, let me make this firm commitment, not to be confirmed. It is the right of the people to be informed of how the government functions. It is not a privilege. If confirmed, I said to you and to this committee and to this honorable body, the rights of the people to be informed will be respected. And that is, if you do the people business here, Tuesdays and Thursdays, it is the right to be informed. 
I promise you and confirm the Liberian people will enjoy the right to be informed. And that is ELBC will cover so that you can say to the people what you say in here and the people can watch it and hear it for themselves and not be told. Thank you. So this committee in collaboration. Chairman, before you can close up, let me just follow, make a follow up on almost your last question. Liberia is the only country I know in our region where the private media institutions are well respected than the state run institutions. Unlike Ghana, Nigeria, any place that Ghana, the Daily Graphic, the Ghana Broadcasting System, in Nigeria, the Daily News, the Nigeria Broadcasting System, they are more respected in the country than the private institution. In Liberia, it's the reverse. How do you take to deal with this? Thank you, Honorable Senator. Yeah. The state-run broadcasting system will be where it's supposed to be at the top. And that's why I have a deal for corporations. If confirmed, I make it not a secret, I will hire the best. And I'll take the best in the business, and we will do the minority people the justice that they deserve in broadcasting. Thank you. This committee will work with your business and the Ministry of Information so that we can change the narrative. Yeah. So that it can be what it should be. When the budget comes, we can assure our people that we'll work with the budget to start this thing going. Uh, I'm privileged to be chair of this committee. Senator Silver is vice chair. Senator uh, Gibbon Smith is the ranking member. And we have other members, including Senator Edwin Snow. Trust me, we bring your president not to show power, but to help for us to change the narrative. So that anything about government, what are, it is breaking news, the people must get it on ELBC first, so it can be a funding. So it can be credible. The expensive. Let it be on ELBC first. Nominations in the government. Anything. <laughs> President Stick, <laughs> President Farrell. Anything. Let it later have passed. Everything. It must be on ELBC. We must empower ELBC that you should change the content. So that ELBC can be what? That enviable state broadcaster that we knew it to be. So that people can be proud to wear the ARBS ID card once again. I want to thank you, uh, distinguished members of the committee. I want to thank you. And at this point in time, we have the Sadia Arms to discharge the nominee. After which we have benediction. Fact, yeah. fact in prison, you tell me what will happen. Yeah, person. <laughs> After which we have benediction, <laughs> and then uh, this year we will be adored. Sanya Alfred released the nominee from honor of. Yes, sir. The power vested in me by the chair on information and broadcasting. Yeah, yeah, back his challenge. The, the question for, uh, uh, about ERBC and Ministry of Information, I saw for already. Chief, I beg you. And so far, we 